Good morning. I'm Ben Hayes, pastor of First Baptist Church, Dadeville, Alabama, bringing you our thought for the day on this Wednesday morning. Uh, it's a beautiful day outside. I hope you've had an opportunity to spend some time uh, in the cool uh, air, uh, just uh, reading the Word of God and just uh, letting Him speak to your heart this morning. That's what I want to do today. I want to let God speak to my heart today, and I hope He'll speak to your heart as well as we continue to look through the, the book of Proverbs. And you know, one of the amazing things about uh, this great book of wisdom is how God constantly uh, uses this to speak to our hearts and to, to prick our minds with just common sense kinds of things, everyday ordinary things. We call it wisdom, but uh, it really is, a lot of this is just common sense. And one of the things that he deals with over and over again is uh, the, the use of our words. You know, in the book of James, he tells us that the tongue is just a tiny member, but it has uh, the power to uh, set on fire uh, the, the world because we fail to control the tongue. In fact, uh, James says if we could control our tongues, we could control our entire bodies. And uh, the problem with that is that we, we can't uh, we j or we don't. But uh, this morning, as we continue to, to look at Proverbs chapter 11, I want to back up a little bit and pick up the verse 11. I mentioned it yesterday, but it carries over with what we're going to be talking about today. He says, By the blessing of the upright, the city is exalted, but it is overthrown by the mouth of the wicked. He who is devoid of wisdom despises his neighbor, but a man of understanding holds his peace. A talebearer reveals secrets, but he who is of a faithful spirit conceals a matter. And I think that in these three writings, these three Proverbs, we see that uh, King Solomon is, is advising us that our words have impacts. Our words matter in, in what we say and, and how we say them. And as he's talking about the city, he's talking about how the city is blessed by the fact that, that righteous men say good things and, and talk uh, uh, well about them. Uh, but the city is overthrown by the mouth of the wicked. When we use our words negatively, when we're critical, we have that critical negative spirit. It affects uh, not just ourselves, but it affects everything around us. And it has the power to truly bring harm to a community, especially a community of faith. And you could apply this to the church as well. That's one of the things that, that I try to encourage folks to do is to always say something positive about uh, the church because no matter how bad things might be there's something you can say that's positive and I'm, I'm so thankful that we have a very positive church because God is blessing in so many different ways but when we start spreading rumors and gossip and, and saying negative things those are the things that catch on real quickly that people will, will continue to repeat over and over again and that can damage uh, a city it can damage a church then he talks about uh, the ones who are devoid of wisdom, those who are foolish. Uh, that's his definition of those who, do, who are devoid of wisdom. Despises his neighbor. Uh, what's the big deal there? Well, it's good to have a good relationship with your neighbor. There's nothing worse than to have to come home every day wondering what your neighbor is going to do or what your neighbor is going to say. Uh, it's good for believers to have good relationships with everyone, but uh, he, what he's talking about here is that when you have that relationship with your neighbor where you are uh, mutually blessing one another, talking to one another, sharing with one another, there's peace and there's harmony. You never have to worry about what your neighbor's going to do or what your neighbor is going to, to say. Um, nothing worse than feuding with your neighbors. He says a man of understanding holds his peace. Uh, truth is, this concept of a man of understanding goes back to, to the work of wisdom. Uh, that's how we become men and women of understanding, is have the wisdom of God in our lives. And men and women of understanding know when not to say something. Um, have you ever noticed someone who, who speaks without thinking sometimes, uh, or they seem like they can't help themselves, they just keep talking? Uh, and get themselves deeper and deeper in trouble. Well, wisdom helps us to avoid that <clears throat> and reminds us that we don't have to say everything 
that we think. Just because you think it doesn't mean that it needs to be expressed. And uh, wisdom helps us to make that determination. And then finally, in verse 13, he says, The talebearer revel reveals secrets, but he who is of a faithful spirit conceals a matter. Uh, we know what he's talking about here. We're talking about people who, who are gossips, people who like to spread uh, details that are supposed to be secret. And if you've ever trusted a friend with uh, something that's truly a secret only to find out that they shared that later, you know how that affects relationships. But he's telling us here we have to be careful because those who have a faithful spirit, those who have a faithful spirit will conceal a matter. They'll hold our confidence and they will, will make sure that they never say anything to anyone about those things that we ask them to keep, uh, keep secret, to keep quiet. <clears throat> and we've all been there. We've all had those experiences. And it goes back to the tongue because it is so tempting. I don't know if, if you've noticed this or not, but there are people out there who cannot wait to share bad news. It's almost like they enjoy sharing bad news. And they want to be the first one to get the word out that something bad has happened. Uh, I think as Christians, it, we ought to be just exactly the opposite of that. We should hold back the bad news as long as possible because as, as we share bad news, we know it brings hurt and despair and frustration. Now, there are times when we have to share it. There are times that for the sake of the people around us, we have to speak those, those words that, that will affect people in that way. But we should be more focused on sharing the good news, the gospel, the joy that's within us telling the world that, uh, that Jesus loves them enough to die on the cross of Calvary for their sins. Isn't it amazing how much easier it is to say something about someone that's negative than to tell a lost person about Jesus? That's human nature. <clears throat> that's our sin nature rearing its ugly head. But today, focus on the tongue. Let God guide you. Let God deliver you from this burden of, of, of being... Uh, the negative, critical person, and, and help let him encourage you to be positive and to say things that will be helpful and beneficial. Remember what your mama told you. If you don't have something nice to say, don't say anything at all. God bless. Have a great day.